Sometimes you do it for class, and, and Mary was going to preach tonight, so I told Mary she could yes, preach Mary next week. Y'all want to hear from Miss Mary next week? Yeah. 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 Woo! Uh, she's speaking. She's awesome. speaking, right? Edit that. <laughs> so uh, she'll be speaking next week, but we have a special treat for Brother Patrick, who uh, looking forward to being ordained with on March 17th. Uh, had his ordination exam with Greg, very great man of God. As soon as I met him, he was, he really impressed me and, and I just would like to call him my brother and my friend and I wanted to come up and speak to you tonight. So, Patrick. Well, y'all got lived up a little bit. Uh, going to be speaking out of Matthew 13 tonight. But uh, while we're turning there, uh, Sean said something I want y'all to disagree or disagree. Sean said God is actively seeking you for a relationship. How many of y'all believe that? Just act like we're not bad, but you can put your hand up. Okay? I, I believe that with my heart. How many of you believe that God loves you and he sent his only son to die for you? How many of y'all believe that? All, right, all of y'all should be putting your hands up, right? So let me ask you something. What is the problem in our society then? If we all truly believe that, we all uh, know God wants to seek and actively seek in a relationship with us, what is the problem? Have you ever really thought about it? How many of y'all know what the problem is? Nobody? You want me to tell you what the problem is? It's your heart. It's the condition of man's heart is the problem. Uh, so the parable of the sower, how many of y'all have ever heard of that? I see you got wrote on your board over here. I see you're going to cover it sometime in the near future. How many of y'all have ever read the parable of the sower? You want to tell you some cool things about it? It's in all four Gospels. It's in all four of them. So you think it's important God's trying to tell us something? When he puts it in all four of the Gospels, he's trying to tell us something. You know, uh, as I was studying for it, I couldn't help but think about, uh, you know, when I was growing up, I wanted to be things. Any of y'all got dreams and ambitions? Y'all still young, you should shake your head. Well, I, yeah, I got a little nephew, and he loves dinosaurs. And he's wanting to be a, uh, I don't know what you call him, one of the people that dig up dinosaurs. Who? Paleontologist. See, one smart kid in the bunch. Are you in all her classes? She is. All right, so what, I could see him being a pet, uh, petologist. Anybody know what that is? <laughs> Not, that's different than what you said. Anybody know what a pedologist is? Uh -huh. It studies soil. They test dirt and they want to see what's in the contents of dirt. You know, this parable of the sower really could be a parable of the soils. So before the night's over with, all of us is going to be a pedologist and we're going to have to examine some soils. <coughs> and all y'all ready? Woo! Geared up for that, right? Woo! All right. Let's read in Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9. He said, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and a great crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. Man, what a beautiful scene that is. Wouldn't y'all love to be at the beach? You got Jesus, goes out on a little boat, he's going to teach you about Scripture. Man, that's like a dream vacation, ain't it? So, um, and he told them uh, many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were, scor they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among, th fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. You know, anytime you hear that part, he who has ears, let him hear. You know what God's wanting you to do? Listen. He's wanting you to hear and listen, right? Man, y'all are sharp. Y'all must be all y'all that accelerated learners in here. Uh, but I want us to talk about three important things. We're going to talk about the sower, the seed, and the soul. And the most important part I want us to focus on tonight is going to be the soul. But uh, I just want to point some things out. The sower, when he left his house that morning, he had a purpose. He had a job to do. How many of us in here are Christians? Do we have a purpose? Do we have a job to do right now for God? 
We do, don't we? Matthew 28 tells us that we should go out and what? Make disciples. We should go out and tell people. It's called a great commission. It's not an option. That's what we're supposed to do in this world. We're supposed to go tell people about Christ. Another thing about the uh, sower, when they went out and throwed seeds in this time, in first century uh, Jerusalem, they didn't have our sophisticated farming system. You know how they threw seeds? Everywhere. They didn't go down a little road or nothing. They just throw on seed everywhere. If you use the same, like get your eye put out or something. They were throwing seed everywhere. That's how we should be throwing the Word of God around in our lives. Everybody you go by, you should be, they should be, whoa, what in the world? They should be getting hit with something. You know, it's, it should be the Word of God you should be throwing out at them. That's the way we're supposed to be sowing seed. Uh, I want to talk to you about the seed. The seed was good. In all the conditions and all the soil that we just read about, what was the one thing that didn't change? The seed. He used the same seed in every condition that he went out and throwed, right? He never changed. You know, too many times in our lives, we see people and they're willing to change something about what they're trying to do. You don't have to change the Word of God in that. That's what saves people. The Bible says that's how a man becomes saved. Romans 10.10 10 says what? It's up there. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. So when that seed hits your heart, what's it going to do? That's how you get saved. That's what it changes. It, it takes root in your heart. So that's very important that we use the same seed all the time. This seed, don't, you don't have to change it. You don't have to add nothing to it. It does it on its own. We just got to be willing to like the sower and go out and throw it. Uh, the seed also, it did grow, didn't it? Yeah. It didn't go, come back void. God's Word tells us that His Word won't come back void. It's going to produce. How much? Sometimes a hundredfold, sometimes sixty, sometimes thirty. But if God's word, if you will be willing to throw it, will always produce. You'll never, never fail if you're willing to do what God wants you to do. I can promise you that. Me and Sean, uh, we had a ministry for a little while where we'd go out soul winning, and it looked bad there for a while. I didn't think we were ever going to get somebody saved. Then what happened, Sean? One day, I had people, they wanted to know Christ. And Sean was able to pray with them and lead them, lead them to, the, to the Jesus. I mean, it's not going to come back forward. Even when you don't think it's doing nothing, that seed is doing something. And all four of those kinds of souls, what did it do? It had an effect, right? It did something. It just didn't lay there and not produce. It was good seed. Uh, but I want to talk about the soil. That's what I want to focus on. Uh, is the four kinds of souls that was talked about here. And the soils are very important because, you know, if we just read 13, 1 through 9, we might not fully understand it. But if you was to flip on a little further and start reading in uh, uh, verse 18 through 22, Jesus actually goes through and he tells us about this parable. Who knows what a parable is? That's what we're reading. It's a parable. Anybody know what a parable is? It's an earthly message, or an earthly uh, story with a heavenly message. That means we don't fully understand what Jesus is talking about. There's two crowds that day. The big crowd, they heard the parable. But then Jesus' disciples, they was fortunate enough that he explained it to them. Because listen to what he says. He says, uh, Hear it in the parable, uh, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, does not understand it. So, some people want to hear things out of the Bible, they don't understand it. Do you know why that is? The Word of God is a mystery to this world. To people that are not filled with the Spirit, it's a mystery. They cannot understand it. Because it's just impossible for them to reach spiritual things when they don't have Christ and the Holy Spirit living inside them. You cannot understand the Bible without being Spirit-filled. I don't care. You could go to seminary from now until Christ comes back. And if you're not filled with the Spirit and you're not being led by the Spirit, you'll never understand God's Word. You never will. So, he's talking to two groups of people, but he comes back and he explains it to his disciples. And uh, the first soul he talks about is the wayside. And it says, when anyone hears the Word of the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away that has been sown in his heart. And this is what is sown along the path. You know, uh, have any of y'all ever formed this much? Mary has, poor Mary. She's had all these kids and she's had to 
raise garden <laughs> for me. But if you walk constantly, walk on dirt, what happens to it? Pass it down. Pass it down, right? That's what they're talking about. This wayside would have been a path through the mid middle of this field or to the side of it, and it would have been packed down. Guess what? It wouldn't have been a prepared soil. So when they threw the seed out on it, it didn't go down in the soil. It laid on top. And these birds would come down and snatch it away. Well, Jesus tells us what those birds are, doesn't he? He says that, what are they? He says uh, the evil one comes. Who's the evil one? Satan. Satan, Satan comes. When you have the word, uh, word of God and it's, and it's on a hardened heart, that's what you see a lot in society right now is people's hearts are hardened toward God's word. So Satan quickly takes that away from them. Because guess what he don't want it to do? He don't want to take a chance of God's word setting up roots in your heart. Because you know what happens at that point? He can't take it away. No matter how bad Satan would like to come and take God and take Jesus out of your heart, once you accept him into your heart, he can't do it. It's already took up root and it, it'll be there. So we know in the soil, in the wayside, that it's from a hardened heart. It's, these are the kind of people that uh, they really don't want nothing to do with God. How many of y'all encounter people in your life right now that don't want nothing to do with God? I work with, you ever heard of atheists and things like that? Well, they're really out there. I mean, it seems ridiculous to us, but these kind of people exist, and their hearts have been hardened to the point where they don't want nothing to do with God. You know, uh, have you ever heard about a three-sided stone? If you take a stone and it's got edges on it, it hurts if you step on it, right? Or if you grind it into your hand, it hurts. Well, over time, if you kept doing it, guess what happens to that stone? It'll get smooth, but your hands will get hardened to it, and it won't hurt no more. That's kind of what God's Word does into somebody's heart. They keep rejecting and rejecting, and over time, they become hardened to His Word. So we need to be mindful of that kind of soul. The second soul was the rocky soul in verses 21 through 22, and it says... And yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word. Immediately he falls away. This kind of soul is somebody that takes the word of God, but what does it happen? When persecution comes, what happens to him? He falls away, doesn't he? How many of y'all have ever seen people like that in church? They come for a little while, and they're doing good, but then over time, what do they do? They begin to slide away, don't they? they? They go away because this soil that he's talking about, in that time, it wasn't it was like a soil with a bunch of rocks in it. It was a thin layer of soil with rock underneath it. So the seed would germinate, and it would start to sprout, but it didn't have enough root system to make it. You see that a lot in churches. A lot of people are willing to say, what do we call it? They have an emotional experience, but they've never really truly experienced God. So they'll do all right for a little while, but when things get hard and get rough, guess what they do? They fall away. <laughs> if I could tell you one thing, uh, I always remember this, that it says uh, that they received his word with joy. I've seen a lot of people have an emotional experience and receive God's word with joy, but they don't stay that way because when hard times come, they leave. Uh, you know, persecution has never hurt the church. Have y'all believe? Can y'all believe that? The church has always been persecuted, but it's never hurt it. You know what hurt the church? Right? What's hurting our churches more today than anything? It's not persecution. It's prosperity. We got people that believe in a prosperity gospel, and it's hurting our churches because it's not biblical. Jesus said that persecution was going to come, didn't he? He didn't say that you was going to come. A Christian and believe in him and you never have no more problems. Y'all remember reading that in the Bible? It's not in there. He says if they hated me they'll hate you for my name's sake. So be mindful of that and, and I want you to remember you got to examine what kind of soil you have in your heart. That soil that we keep talking about Jesus told us in uh, his word he says uh, that the soil is our heart. And that's what your heart is. It's kind of like this soil. It's these different kinds of hearts right here he's talking about. The different conditions of man's heart. You know, earlier I asked you what the problem was in our society. 
This is the problem. It's, the, it's all these conditions of the heart. It ain't God's word getting effective. It's that we're letting things in our hearts and we're not having our hearts prepared to receive it. That's the problem. So, uh, the thorns, and I think this one will relate to more than any other of souls, is the thorns. And it says this, it says, For what was sown in, among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but he cares, uh, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and proves unfruitful. How many of you all have ever sat at home when you know you should have been at church Sunday morning, and instead you might have said, me and my friends are having a little get-together, and I believe I'd rather go do that. So you go do that. Maybe on Wednesday night, you always want to go to the movies instead of coming to church and, and being faithful to the Bible study and the youth program. How many of y'all have ever done that? You know, these are the things that he's talking about. The thorns is what anything that crowds Jesus out of your heart. Any of y'all ever sowed a uh, kind of garden or had to keep a garden at all? Well, if you do, I have this problem in my garden, is these weeds just like to come up in it. But guess what? I just don't go out there and it's covered up in weeds. It's a process. It starts slowly. These thorns, when he sowed the seed, they just didn't instantly choke out the seed, did they? They grew up in this thorns slowly did this to the seed. That's what we let things in our heart do with God's word. It starts off slowly, and it goes, and eventually it'll choke out the Word of God. We let things come into our lives that we're willing to put before God. How many of y'all have ever heard of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus? Right? Seemed like a cool guy. He was young. He was affluent. He had money. He had material goods. He's everything that we would want. Everything that the world says that you would want a leader or somebody to be a part of your organization, he was it. He had everything. But what did Jesus tell him? He told him to do certain things. He said, go and sell all that you have, and then follow me. But the guy did what? Did he jump up for joy and say, all right, I get to follow Jesus? He didn't do that. You know what he did? The Bible says he went away sorrowful. In other words, he went away crying because he wasn't willing to put Jesus first in his life. He, cho he chose the things of this world. He chose the riches of this world instead of Jesus. How many of us do that? Maybe not on that scale, but we've been guilty of picking things before Christ. We put things before we did him. We've all done it. But we need to be careful because if you ain't real careful, you know what will happen? You'll form what we like to call a habit. And a habit don't just pop up like that. <coughs> it starts slowly. I think they say about, it takes about four weeks to form a habit. I don't know. Any of y'all ever form a habit? So if Sean ain't got no habits, he wouldn't really know. <laughs> but, uh, so it takes, you know, time. Uh, you know, uh, I've heard a story about a frog. Any of y'all ever boiled frogs in water before? Well, let me tell you a little story how to do it. If you get your water hot and you throw that frog in it, guess what it's going to do? He's getting out of there. He ain't hanging out. But you put him in the pot and it's cold, guess what he does? Oh, man, it's all right. I got my own little jacuzzi. I'm hanging out, chilling in here. Ooh, it's getting hot, you know. He might bump around a little bit. And then poor long, he's like, man, it's real hot. You know, he's dead. <laughs> he don't know to jump out. That's what we do in our lives. Before long, we'll let things come into our lives. And guess what happens? It's too late. And once you realize that it's a thorn and it's choked Jesus out of your life, guess what? It's already there and it's already happened. You know, Casting Crown sings that song about Rome didn't crumble in a day. Start with one crack. That's your walk with Christ. It starts with one thing that you'll let take his place. It might be that boy that talks to you real pretty on the phone. You know? It might be that girl guy that you know you lay awake and think about. It might be her. You know what I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> so be mindful of these kinds of things in your life. It starts little, I promise you. It starts off little 
And it'll seem so innocent to you. But it can be so deadly for your walk with Christ. So be mindful of these things. You know, finally, in verse 23, it talks about a good soul. It talks about a soul that I think all of us hope that we have in our hearts. I hope this is the way your heart is tonight. And I hope that you've already had your hearts prepared when you come to church that you're ready to receive God's word. Because these people are throwing it around. But you've got to be wanting to receive it. You know, That's one thing about Christ. You know, you've got all these people in your, in your life, all these grown-ups, and they're pushing stuff on you. You know, they want you to do what? You know, live their lives for them a little bit. And, but you know, Jesus, he ain't going to make you do that. He's not a bit pushy. You know, it's all up to you whether you want to do what he asks you to. Uh, but verse 23, it says this, And as for a son on good soul, this is the one who hears the word, understands it, Indeed, bears fruit and yields one case a hundredfold and another sixty and another thirty. You know, uh, first, you know, this soul was prepared. When they heard the word, their hearts was ready to receive it. And they did it. And then they produced from it. But they also perceived it. They understood it. What was the first thing that the uh, first kind of soul, what couldn't they do? They didn't understand it, did they? They, their hearts were hardened. They wasn't. This soul is everything the first soul was. And this soul produced where the other soul didn't. So, John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he is he who bears much fruit. For apart, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus has got to be in your heart for you to produce fruit. I don't care. You will never produce fruit in this world without Christ in your heart. That's just, the Bible teaches that over and over. He also describes his father as the vine dresser in John 15. And you know what he does? He prunes us so we'll produce more fruit. So, you know, I asked all of us about being a pedologist tonight. And what's a pedologist? Somebody who studies soil, right? And I think all of us tonight we can say that we're a pedologist, but you're not studying any kind of soul. You're studying your own heart right now. That means you've got to look into your own heart, and you've got to be honest and see if you receive God's Word or not. You know, that's how you get saved. God's Word enters into your heart, and then you confess with your mouth. That's how everybody's saved. Brother Sean, does anybody else come? There's no other way to get saved except through Christ. You know, so... Uh, I know we. I don't know if you guys usually have an altar call, but uh, we'll play a little music and uh, have a little altar call. And if y'all would like to come up and pray, Sean will be up here, Mary pray with you, uh, Faith, and Christy's in the back. But I want you to examine that soil tonight. Examine your heart and be honest with yourself. And don't let Satan come in and snatch that away because it's so precious that Jesus loved you enough. Like Sean said, he, he was seeking you. He's active. He's looking for you to have a relationship with you. And I just want you to search your hearts tonight and ask you, you've got that personal relationship with Christ. Push on. Yes, it is.